So here, this is called gondere. You already ate this before. Yes, it is a medicinal plant. So, you know, in Korean Forest Service has different items which they are non-timber products from the mountain. And this plant is number 29. Okay. So the thing is this, Kondere is one of uh, patent, uh, patent, licensed yeah. plant because not only because we consume it, but we have a history of 400 years of consuming this plant. So that is why they, uh, depending on the level of the sea, you know, we are high above this area is called Gangwon province. From the Gangwon province, we are high above the sea level and this special plant Gondere can grow in a clear and clean area high above sea level. the sea level. That is why Gangwondo, this province, is so famous of this wild herb called Gondere. But there are many wild herbs. But you know, the herbs have medicinal effect. Yeah. So sometimes if you eat too much herb, it can damage your liver, it can damage your lung, it can, it can be poisonous if you over consume. But this, mm. this uh, herb, there is no problem, even though you consume it every single day, it will do no, no harm to the body. So this wild herb, gondere, can cure diseases of liver, but not from the leaf or not from the fl flower, but from the roots. Okay. Yes. So it's like this. There is a medicine called silimar. Silimar is a medicine that is effective with your liver. But when you harvest the roots of the kundere, you can use the roots and ex extract and you can get the medicine called silimal. So kundere is one of the uh, medicinal herbs that gives good effects to human body. So if you eat kundere, if you consume kundere, it helps people the, the digestion. And sometimes people cannot go to the toilet. Very difficult. So when you eat this, you can go to the toilet happy. My name is Choi Youngju. I'm in charge of this facility. They produce here non-timber products from the mountain. So this facility, what they do is they receive wild herbs from the local farmers. Okay. And then they produce it into a different kinds of products. So we will take a look around. So at the moment, we're not harvesting the wild herbs. That is in the early spring season. Okay, so nice. right now the facility is not running, but we can explain to you what kind of job they do here. Sure, okay? okay? Sure. So what we are going to do is we're going to see how the facility looks like for inside. Like their production, what they produce, they will explain to us. And we will come back here again. You can experience how you make the wild herb with rice, how you mix it, how you cook it. Like okay. this kind of experience for like younger generation and we teach. So we want you to have this experience. Yes. So first, let's say, you are a farmer, you are a forester, you are, I don't know, the neighborhood, like, we all, let's say we all live in this neighborhood. So Sunny will bring 100 kilos of wild herb. He will bring maybe 200 kilos, 300 kilos, 100 kilos, 50 kilos, like that. They buy from the people that they live in this area. They receive the wild herb, the wild herb will come in here. So <laughs> there is a certificate by the government, G-A-P which means they got a good qualification of producing wild herbs. So they will receive these wild herbs from the local people in this regional area. And then they, when it comes here, we collect them, we measure them, we pay you, and then it goes throughout this, this conveyor belt. Then it goes into that machine, the round one. Why? To get rid of any kind of insect or any kind of different uh, you know, when you pick the herbs, you also pick the grass. We get rid of that. So it's like this. For any, any Koreans who wants to consume their product, because they have a certificate from the government, this certificate is every year rene renew. Why? Because they check the quality of the water they use here. They check if the products don't have remaining uh, pesticides or, or remaining chemicals. Like, you, you pesticide the... Sometimes people use that. So we check our herbs, final product, that it is no harm to the consu consumers. So they get that certificate from the government each year. So we put the leaves here, and then maybe a little bit dead, rotten, then we pick it out, we throw it away, and then it goes up, 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 up. 
So, so like this, the conveyor belt will move, and then the herbs will go up, 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 up. So they get rid of the bulk. Washing, washing part. They wash the herbs. Let's say we are all farmers, we all supply her wild herbs. There is a certain uh, institute that they do this test for us. And what they do is, okay, let's say they are going to go to your farm and then they will check. If you are following the rules correctly, if the farmers are following the rules correctly, it can be whomever from here. It can be me, it can be you, it can be him, it can be she, whom, we don't know. They get to select a plot and we checked it for two years in a row nice. if they are using they, you can use pesticides but you cannot overdose so they check the remaining pesticides or so they check the wild herb at the moment that they're not overdosing it uh -huh. so they will check with one farmer two years in a row so in that kind of case we we can verify the quality of the product so as you see this, this is their certificate of GAP. So this number has a serial number. So this certificate number, if I'm a normal person, if I'm a consumer, I'm a buyer. I buy this product and I search this in the internet, they will let me know who produce and how they produce. So GAP is a certificate that the farmers can get, or so the facility can get. It is two different. But there are certain circumstances that you have to pass and there, it is written down in a paper. I cannot tell you one by one, but these are processes that you have to pass. It's like a test. So if you're qualified, then you get this certificate. So when the, sem when the products come in, they take the samples to do the test with the sample. If there is any heavy metal or chemicals inside the product. And then we do every month test, sample test with the final product that we make and what we do is we check if there is any other heavy metals or pesticides left over inside the final product. Japanese larch is uh, normally the tree that comes inside here. Large, yes. More than 95% we produce Japanese larch. And we also do the pine trees and the Korean pine. So this here, this is where they cut down the trees. Not, not this, well, they make it into certain sizes of the trees. This is where they cut the trees into pieces. With this one, we make pallets. This one is to make one wood and then the other wood to be attached together. So this is where we store our pallets. We save the pallets inside here after we make them. You know the sawdust, we use it for animals, maybe the bedding you know, for uh, cows or different kind of animals yeah. before when we make uh, pellets but now these days we make pellets so there is zero waste yeah, in this factory yes, exactly that may be naive but you know, when we went up to the to the plantations up there 
-hmm. We said the trees could be either owned by the state or by the, the owner. Tra traditional owners. Yes. Okay. So in the event that they need that wood and they go and cut up there and bring it down, do they pay the National uh, Korean Forest Service or the traditional landowner? And okay. If they do, how much? Okay. For example, if Let's say Sunny has this mountain. Yes. I have so many trees. I'm a yes. private owner. Yes. yes. And then there is another mountain. It's owned by the government. Government has plans to when to cut and when to plant. Yes. So government tree, uh, government mountain has no problem. But let's say individual, like Sunny has a mountain and I want to cut down my trees. Then I make a contract with the cutting people. There are people that they only do tree, uh, cutting trees. Tree harvesting. Yes, tree harvesting is their job. Mm -hmm. So I make a contract with them. They and then they will say, okay, your hectare is maybe oh, oh 1.2 hectare. Then I see this much trees. And then Sunny, I will give you this much money. Then we say, okay, then you take. Can be. Yes, like that. Simple and easy. Uh, government give you license to cut the tree. Okay. Mm -hmm. But this license is like this. Okay, let's say Sonny's trees are already 60 year old, 70 year old. Okay, let's say. Even though gover if the government doesn't want them, if, if they don't want me to cut down my trees, then I cannot, even though yeah, I don't. Right. So it is like this, even though Sunny owns a mountain, oh, I hope I did. Yeah. <laughs> even though Sunny owns a mountain, even though my trees are ready to harvest, it needs to cooperate with the planning of the local regional government's uh, tree planting time, and it must to, be... To get the cutting permission. Yes, yeah. to get Cut. the cutting, cutting do you, license. Do you have any transit permit? What's transit permit? Do you do you need any permission? Permission. Do the people need any par my permission from the government to transport from one area to other areas? No, we don't need that. No, you but, you don't need that. But, they are free. Yes, but another thing. You know, because of the pine diseases, mm. you know, mm. it becomes red and then they all die. Because of that, so sometimes pine tree is not allowed to move from one district to another district. So what we do here is we test different kinds of mushroom germs here or so we test and also like this we give supply to the farmers yes. yes so they can grow it right away from this one you see this is the fungus we drill the, we drill the oak tree okay we put it in there okay and then we give water to the oak tree okay shade Okay. Water. Yeah. We wait. We pray. We see. <laughs> the next morning, we see the mushrooms. <laughs> yes. This is before incubation. Inoculation. Before, uh, this is right now. It's doing incubation. Yeah. It's growing. You see. Oku oku mushroom mycelium fungi. In our factory, you can see how we make this. Okay. Let's move on. Yes. So the the sawdust is mixed. Afterwards, this is the automatic machine that it puts it into the jar. This goes on and then, and then we put it inside the cart. We put a very hot steam inside. Steam, yeah. hot steam and boiler. And boiler. And then afterwards, chilling. Chilling. And uh, inoculation. Inoculation of uh, in fungus. Yeah. Uh, incubation. And uh, incubation. Incubation. Yeah. And product. We have 21 different kinds of uh, way of growing mushrooms with the the sow dust. Yes. Uh, uh, uh. So we give this out to the farmers and we teach them how to grow by this. What's the temperature in here? 18. 18, yeah. Uh, so the, after yeah, inoculation, yeah. we do incubation for four months. And afterwards, we can harvest this up to four to six months. The mushrooms we can harvest. There are people that they they cultivate all year around. They use heaters. <laughs> and then the oak mushrooms normally they grow faster, or they grow when this tree is dead. Uh, when the cells are alive, then they will not grow. Okay. okay. Now, another question was, all the inoculation have been done in same day. In the same day or mm. not? It's like this. It's not like, oh, I sow the seeds so everything grows in once. No. no. I sow 100. 
Yes, I sold 100. This year, 30%. Next year, 30%. We don't know where it will grow. This we inoculated last year. Oh. So we are thinking of 30% of growing this autumn season. Ah, yes. The mushroom growing is not easy. You know why the mushroom is very expensive? 